All right, so I finished my general announcements, the highlights of which are that CFU 7 was just passed back today. So students have a week to turn that in or to retake that if they didn't do so well. Homeworks 25 through 29 are due today for the first time. So again, students have a week to get that in for only 10% off. Today, we're gonna do two practice problems that simulate the CFU today very closely. We'll take CFU number eight, and then we have one page of notes that we're gonna complete after that. Remember, the rest of this week will be spent reviewing all the material that we've covered throughout this entire packet for the last several weeks, and that's to prepare for a test on Friday. One last thing, and I'm realizing I didn't say this already, so if you were absent yesterday, make sure you grab one of these yellow packets. This is a review packet. It's due on Friday, the day of the test, and it counts as 10 free points on the test. So if you were not here yesterday, make sure you pick that up. That being said, students were already given time to complete the multiplication at the top page 37. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rolling with the bottom half. This is again, to help us prepare for today's CFU. So the first type of problem you're going to encounter is compounded interest. So reading through this, it says, determine how much more money Kevin will have in his bank account after four years, that is your time, if he deposits $5,000. That's your initial amount, what banks often call principal. Now, the bank provides a 4.1% interest rate, that's your R. But remember, to convert any percentage to a decimal, you have to take that percentage and divide it by 100. So this would be 0 0.041. That's how you'd write that as a decimal. Okay, and it's always divided by 100. Finally, we've got compounded weekly, and that is what's going to give you your N, which again is a number that always appears twice. How many weeks are in a year, folks? 52, 52. So what that's basically saying is the bank, while you have 5,000, bank is offering 4.1% interest, but they're not going to give it to you all at once. They're going to cut it into 52 little micro payments. Now, what that also means is you're not just getting one payment at the end of the year, you're getting 52 payments spread out over the year. And that's going to happen every single year, in this case, for four years. And you can type this in exactly as it's written in your calculator. I'll demonstrate that now. Okay. So the first thing I did, just to remind folks, is I took the interest rate and divided by 100. That's what helps convert it to a decimal. But then I say, all right, I'm starting with 5,000. I'm going to earn 4.1% interest, which is split over 52 payments. And that means I get 52 payments a year for four years. Okay. Now I get a lot of students that don't like the fact that I use double parentheses. So remember, that's just my way of showing the substitution. If you'd rather type it as 52 times four, that's literally the same thing. Okay. That has no effect on the mathematics. All right, but that's your final balance. And normally I would go to three decimals. Normally I'd call this $5,890.69 and that zero would round up to a one because it's followed by a nine. But because we are talking about money, I'll just ignore the third decimal and call it that, $5,890.69. That is the answer I'd be looking for. Questions? Now, that is one style of question that's going to be on the CFU. The other style is, can you create a graph and identify its features? So the next question says, create an accurate graph of f of x equals e to the x plus 3, plot slash label at least four points as well as the asymptote. Okay? Now, especially because you never know who did what with a calculator, I would always recommend you reset the calculator. Second plus 712 just as a, way of, as a way of protecting yourself. Not that you have to. I'm going to go to y equals. Now, I will admit, I'm going to give you all a little bit of an extra helping hand because I was quite honestly shocked that this happened last class. People during the CFU called Mr. Fee and myself over to ask, how do you type E? I'm warning you now, we're not going, going to answer that question because I'm showing you now for probably the 20th time how to type E. Okay, so I'm literally trying to help you do your best on the CFU you're about to take, and it's up to you to pay attention, take notes, ask questions. Okay, so remember, E is paired with the division key. It's the blue letter, so I need to hit the blue button, second, and then division. That's how you get E. Now, I'm going to use the power button 
Okay, that little arrow puts me up in the exponent, type X, and then I'll type plus three. Notice I did not do that. Take a moment to appreciate the difference between those because the red is bad. Okay, make sure when you type that plus three, notice that plus three is not part of the exponent. It's not small and written next to the X. It's its own thing. So the way you type it in has to reflect that. Okay, so I'm going to clear out this bad equation. And this is the thing I actually want to create. Now, I can actually see this horizontal asymptote, which is what the plus three did. It literally created, I'll graph it, the asymptote y equals three. That's the horizontal asymptote. So what I would recommend is just to help you graph it, go ahead and give yourself that dotted line at y equals three. Go ahead and name it. Yes, sir. The dotted line I'm drawing by hand, are you talking about this red line? I So I typed the equation in for a separate line. So if I clear that out, the blue curve is the curve itself. And then if I want to see that red line, I just type the number three, y equals three. And it'll create that line for me, just so I can see it. Okay. Now, I don't know if everyone heard what Mr. Fee just said. He talked about moving up. I'm not sure if he was just talking about the horizontal asymptote or the fact that this is a growth function. But let me get rid of this three just so we can see the curve. I can see very clearly on the left side, this thing is approaching three. So it's just flattening out. On the other side, it is growing to positive infinity. Okay, so that helps me with my range. I know this thing doesn't go any lower than three and I know it shoots all the way up to positive infinity, okay? Oh, and I already mentioned it's growing. Now, in terms of the domain, I've said multiple times, every exponential function we deal with has the same exact domain. And what it comes down to is when your variable is in the exponent, your variable can be anything you want it to be. There's no rule that says you can't use certain numbers for an exponent. You can use positives. You can use negatives. You can use decimals, fractions. You can use zero. doesn't matter. So X is allowed to literally be anything. Okay. Visually, you can see this function goes to the left forever. It goes to the right forever. Now, the only thing I haven't written down yet is the y-intercept. And I would say, even that, you have two different ways of getting it. Number one, you can see it. Where does this graph hit the y-axis, folks? At what number? At four. So I could look at the picture and I could see this thing hits at zero comma four. But also, if I remember the y-intercept only occurs when x equals zero, I can imagine plugging that in for x. So e to the zero, what is e to the zero? What is anything to the zero? One. So if you imagine plugging in zero for x, e to the zero and one plus three is four. So when you plug in zero for x, you get four for y. So I guarantee you that's gonna be one of the points in our, in our grid, which is the next thing I wanna fill out. That way I can actually fill in the graph. But notice, just by looking at the picture, we were able to fill in every single one of these properties. So please, on today's CFU, if you have trouble with the graph, don't give up. At least type the function in and look at the picture and use that to answer some of the properties. Now, that being said, I'm going to go to my table. I'm going to ignore any numbers bigger than 17 because that goes off the chart, which means I can't go as far down as three. Okay, that would be up at 23 point. I'm just going to round to one decimal. I said the same thing before. E produces really ugly numbers. So I'm only going to use one decimal place. That one's too big. So I'm going to back up. I'm going to use two and 10.4. That three would round to a four. I'm going to use one and 5.7. Of course, I'm going to use zero and four. That's actually clean numbers. And to get my fourth point, I'll back up and use negative one comma 3.4. Again, that 0.3 would round up because it's followed by a six. So the four points I'm going to use starting at negative one are negative one, 3.4, which I'll graph now, negative one and 3.4, zero and four. Now that is the only point that I would expect to be graphed perfectly. Okay. Cause that's just nice, clean numbers, zero comma four. And don't be confused. Remember our asymptote is at Y equals three. So if you have a point at zero comma four, it's only one spot above that line, okay? Then I've got one comma 
and two comma 10.4. And the only point that I would be truly picky about is zero comma four. Like that one's gotta be graphed perfectly. The other three just need to be reasonably close. Questions? All right, so students just finished taking CFU number eight. Uh, remember again, that this CFU is unique because I wanted to get this back to you all before the test. So anybody who's not here today, their only makeup day is tomorrow. I'm gonna pass this back to you all on Thursday. That way you can get this feedback prior to the test on Friday. Now, as I said, one last idea that I wanted to talk about, and that is specifically with the letter E or the number E. Anyone remember, just out of curiosity, how to pronounce that word? I said the common mispronunciation is Euler. Anyone recall what is the correct way to pronounce that? Euler, Euler, okay? So I wanna talk about the one final application of Euler's number, okay? First of all, we're gonna use our calculator to write the number down. So if you go to your calculator, everybody just hit second division because this today's notes, this page is going to start with let's get comfortable. Again, the phone needs to be put away. Okay. So everybody can go ahead now, hit second division key and hit enter and write down that full value. All right. So if you hit second division, you'll get that number. Please go ahead and take a moment to write down that full number, 2.718281828. Now, the other three pieces is just let's get comfortable typing E into our calculator. I'll do the first one, then I'm going to give you all 30 seconds apiece for the other two. So the first one is the directions say calculator practice, type each of the following into your calculator, write the answer of each rounded to three decimals. So the first one is 6e to the fourth times two. So I'm going to write down 17,885, and it says round to the third decimal. So a lot of people just do this, but if you want to round to the third decimal, you have to ask yourself, what is the next number? And if that next number is a five or higher, in this case, it's a nine, that means this should be rounded up. So that's how we're going to record this, 17,885.748. Okay, so take one minute, do the other two yourselves. This is just an opportunity to make sure you know how to use the calculator with Euler's number. Go. All right, so hopefully you got a little over 35,000, and if you rounded to the third decimal, you get 0.438. Questions on either of those, or does anyone want me to demonstrate any of those? Okay, so now we're going to get into the actual final application of Euler's number. The number E can be used when bank interest is compounded, what's called continuously. It can also be used for many other real world growth and decay situations such as with bacteria. So here's the main thing that I want you all to understand because this, again, this formula that I'm about to present will be given to you on your test Friday. The question is, will you know when and how to use it? So if I tell you something like the interest is compounded quarterly, then that means you're using the same formula you should have used for the CFU you just took. Quarterly means you get four payments a year, so N is four. If I say it's compounded monthly, well, that means you get a payment every month, so N is 12. If it's weekly, well, then you get a payment every week, so N is 52. Okay, the other one is compounded daily. There are 365 days in a year. So if you hear compound, and then there's a word that you can actually attach a number to, like weekly, monthly, daily, then this is the formula you should be using. The same formula we used in our warm-up, the same formula you should have used on the CFU that you took a moment ago. However, if you're given a problem that says compounded continuously, you can't set N to any number. It's like, what would N be? There's no number there. So that changes it to the E-based formula. It says the formula for interest is compounded continuously looks like this. Now, the nice thing about this formula is all the letters are basically the same thing. A is still your final amount. P is still your initial amount. Banks often call that a principal. Okay. R still represents your rate of change, You know, often an interest rate. P still represents time. So all of these variables are still things we've seen before. 
the key here is realizing that you have to use this other formula, which has E for a base. So you will need to know how to use this formula. Again, this will be given to you on your test. And we'll practice it tomorrow and the next day, because this is truly the last new thing that I could possibly show you for this unit. Okay. Now, let me show you two quick examples, and then believe it or not, we're done. That's, that's all we're doing today, just two quick examples of this formula. So example number one says, you deposit $1,000, that is still your initial amount, into a bank account that pays 8% interest. That is still your rate, and you still need to divide it by 100 to convert it to a decimal. 8 divided by 100 converts that to 0 0.08. So you still have to do that. However, when you read compounded continuously, that doesn't tell you N. Instead, that tells you this formula is the formula you should be using. It tells you you should not be using this formula. That's not the formula for compounding continuously. That's the formula for compounded weekly or daily or monthly, okay, or quarterly, whatever you want to call it, okay? Then I keep reading. It says, what is the balance in your account after two years? So time is two. Use the formula to show the setup and round your answer to the nearest cent. So I started with $1,000. The, the bank is paying interest, which compounds continuously. So I know it's going to be that base E formula. My rate is 8% and the time is two years. And so I can literally type that in exactly like that in my calculator. $1,000 compounded continuously at a 0.08% rate for two years. And I end up with a little over $1,100. 73 and if I round, 51 cents. Last problem. And I'm, I apologize for rushing a little bit, but we have... Even though we're going to be in this room for the next like 45 minutes, we technically have two minutes left. So I'm going to try to end in two minutes. You deposit $975, that's your initial amount, into an account that pays 5.5% interest. That's your rate, which again, you must divide 5.5 by 100 to convert it to the decimal form that you need. I really hope, by the way, where you don't actually need to do that, that you're able to look at 5.5 and know well, that's just point five. okay? Now, when it says compounding continuously, that is what tells me I have to use this format, okay? And it says, what is the balance in your account after six years? So we plug in six for T. This is what our work looks like. We start with 975, compounds continuously at 5.5% interest for six years. And our final balance is going to be a little over $1,300. now equipped with what you need to know to be able to do homework number 30. Okay, for the purpose of the video, I'm going to zoom out and just show homework number 30 real quick. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.